I've heard Nashville called a drinking town with a music problem. And standing here on Broadway, I can see and hear why. It's lined with saloons and honky-tonks like the iconic purple-painted Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. And just steps away is the Ryman Auditorium, former home of the Grand Old Opry and now just lovingly dubbed the Mother Church of Country Music. Nashville is more than just a place for music lovers. With its world-class restaurants and hotels and distilleries, it's a spot for those who love to eat and drink. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes and Destinations is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. Come with me to stamp your passport to delicious. I'm drinks and culinary expert, Leslie Sabraco and I'm traveling, tasting, sipping, and savoring the world to share my bucket list of palate-pleasing experiences <laughs> on 100 Days, Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations. Nashville is located in the center of the state of Tennessee along the banks of the Cumberland River. Not only is it the state's capital, it's also its most populous city, with nearly two million people living in and around Nashville. And there's more than 15 million people visiting annually. The city was named after General Nash of the Continental Army. Though anchored in the past, Nashville is barreling into the future. It's comprised of a vibrant collection of diverse neighborhoods. Cranes dominating the skyline attest to the growth of this booming city as it gains more than 100 new residents a day. It's an incubator for all genres of music, as well as a place for everything hot, baby. And I mean spicy. The perfect spot to step into it all is the spacious and storied Acme Feed and Seed. Representing Nashville's past, present, and future, the building has been lovingly restored by owner Tom Morales. Built around 1890, you'll find the original floors, windows, and beams. One measures 88 feet long. They've reclaimed and repurposed materials not only from this building, but from all over Nashville, including church pews, old press plates, and vintage photographs. As a kid, I came here. It's a two-car trip with 10 kids, and you know, we'd bring three German Shepherds with us and because they had a free dog dip on Saturdays. So my dad would bring them down here to dip them for fleas. But once you dipped them, you couldn't get back in the car and drive home. Just think of this before Home Depots and Lowe's. So you, so you come just here. wander around. Yeah, that was that was childhood memories. I mean, hang out, play at the river. We have the Cumberland River here, and you can go to New Orleans from right here, via the Ohio, via the Tennessee River, via the Mississippi. So is it surreal to now own this building? For me, as a Nashvilleian, you can save a building here and a building there, which I've done. Right now, I'm really interested in saving Nashville from itself. You know what? Once you get enamored with yourself as the it city, you can see 29 cranes around here right now. We, we lose the identity of who we are. It's important to hold on to that. And to balance the progress with the past. Yes, and that is our mission here at Acme as well. We, we had to figure out a way to make it economically viable to save the building. We were the first ones to do a rooftop bar. This is the chill area, we call it the chill area. It's a higher end cocktail list, so it was kind of like an upper scale thing. They're serving up plenty of Southern favorites here, and of course, there's Nashville's famous hot chicken. Here they make it the traditional way with plenty of their own hot, hot, hot sauce. Basically, we built our whole vitality as a company around hospitality. I bring people in that have that innate hospitality. And most of these people here, if you, if you wanted to stop them and say sing, they can sing their ass off. <laughs> I, I, I'm just blown away by the amount of talent. Every t step you take, every turn you make here. Everybody here has a day job and a dream. In Acme, we are still the discovery platform. We are still giving these people opportunity to get on a stage. We're telling them to be who you are, express yourself. The band down there today, man, those are legends on that stage. And there's always music. Absolutely. And I even got 
to hear the legendary soul man, Charles Wig Walker. <laughs> she can dance better than I can. <laughs> out on the town, it doesn't take long to figure out that folks are crazy about their hot chicken. So many places and so many versions. And at Edley's, another Nashville institution, I'll not only get to taste their hot chicken, I'm gonna make it. Basically, we're gonna start with just a chicken tender. All right. And we'll lay that out on the table and we'll pound that out just a hair to uh, Thin soften it. Out. Yes. So once we pounded out the tender, we're gonna stick this into a buttermilk brine. We put a little bit of pickle juice, a little bit of jalapeno juice in that brine, and also a little bit of hot sauce. And we'll let that sit overnight. And it comes out like this. This is our homemade breading that we make for ourselves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of those pieces, we're gonna dip them in the buttermilk, and we're gonna throw them in here, toss them around a little bit. Now look at that. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about hot chicken, because this is a Nashville staple, it's but it a, dates back to the it 30s, dates back a long 40s, time ago. it dates back here. Yes. So basically, a Miss Prince husband came home one night real late. I guess he had been running around all night, and she was very mad at him, decided to make his fried chicken that night extremely hot. So she threw a bunch of cotton <laughs> As a little in, punishment. At, yeah, just to get him back. Well, he ended up loving it. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. So Princess Hot Chicken was the originator of this, but it's everywhere. So it what is. is your particular style of hot chicken? So our style, we only do it in the tender form, so we don't do the, the half chickens or the bone-in chicken. Right. Typically, you would take oil, and you'd add a bunch of heat or cayenne or any right. kind of chili pepper to it to grab a bunch of heat. It was got a little too greasy for me yeah. and, um, in general, so we made a rub that we actually use, more like a barbecue style with a lot of heat. Okay. Put it right in there and start shaking on top. Shaking on top. Shaking and baking. Okay. We're going to flip it. Okay. Go ahead and do a little more shake. We're going to take our jalapeno ranch. Now we're going to add Pick chicken it up pieces. Pick chicken. it up with your hands. Put it right there. Okay. One on the other side. And then we're going to grab a little bit of slaw. And that's a vinegar-based slaw right on top. Grab you two pickle slices, put it on top of that. And then we're going to add a little bit more jalapeno ranch. And then we're going to take the top of the bun. We're going to just lay it right on the side. Nice. That's a hot chicken sandwich. That is a hot chicken sandwich from Edley's here in Nashville. There we go. There's your bushwhacker and beer combo. There we go. So we're getting ready for the food. I've got my hot chicken sandwich ready to eat. I'm just, just salivating, ready to eat that. A beer. Yeah, that's a local brewery called Black Abbey. This is our fruit tea. Um, we actually add bourbon. Now let's talk about dessert in a glass, the bushwhacker. Oh, the bushwhacker. It's a great little milkshake. Like, that 151 rum is the one. <laughs> Very rum. You that, get the rum on. You get chocolate. It. You get coffee. Vanilla. Mm. What, what else is in coffee here? Very rum. Cocoa liqueur. Cocoa liqueur. Bunch of rum. Dig in. I'm getting some burn. But the coleslaw gives you this crunch. Yep. And then because it's so fr the crunch of the fry, mm -hmm. so you, have, you bite into it and it goes crunch. And then the pickle. And now the jalapeno's kicking in. Yep. Oh, now I'm getting the jalapeno. It'll start getting you now. Ooh, yeah. But it's not overwhelming. Whoa, Mark's coming. A uh, pork sandwich with black eyed peas and collard greens, plate of wings, catfish, tacos, baked beans, uh, and mac and cheese, a brisket platter with <laughs> banana pudding and bean salad, the world's most addicting of fried pickles. Oh, stop enjoy? it already. Oh, my this God. This is our half chicken platter I wanted to bring out and okay. show you. Obviously, we do kind of meat and three style. So typically, back in the day, they would have meat and threes, which mm -hmm. usually two or three meats is what they had, and then about five to 10 sides. Right. And you'd walk through your line with your tray, and you'd pick a meat and three sides, and that was your meal. That's our brisket. That's like butter. Good. All right, I am too curious you Got to do banana pudding. So we make that fresh every morning. Vanilla wafers with this creamy, but not overly sweet. Nothing you're doing is overly sweet here. Yeah. And let me just reach over here and just Grab some corn, end with that. This is fantastic. Oh, I good. love it. Before I toast you, because I'm going to go in and eat all this. Trust me. <laughs> I'm going to actually just do a little prep work. I'm cheers you with. You're going to need that. <laughs> cheers. cheers. One of Nashville's hottest spots is the Downtown Sporting Club. It's where I'm meeting owner Max Goldberg, along with two locals, for a sharp, I mean razor sharp adventure. How many square feet is this place? 42,394. Not that I know it off the top of my head. Where do we start? Uh, let's go back here. Come on, got some burgers ready. We are sitting in the ribbon room, which is our primary kind of dining space here in the Downtown Sporting Club. Oh, perfect. I love a good oh, burger. Oh, yay! So there's a double burger in here. Oh, absolutely. I'm going for the double meat patty. Go for it. Mm. Oh my God, that is such a good burger. Yeah, we're proud of it. And my brother. That is good. What is that secret sauce? I can't tell you. It's a secret. Mm. That's 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 part of the you fun, have to right? Tell me. <laughs> if you told me. I would me. not kill you. And tots. Selfishly, tater tots one of my favorite foods. That helps you when you extra, right? 
I think anything can help you axe throw. An axe throw to me is just as fun and safe as throwing darts. We discovered it when we were in Canada, and it's this sport that's been around for a long time, and people have created these leagues, and it's just too fun. One more bite of Please. Smash Burger yes. before, yes, before we go throw some that. axes. And then after that, Ooh. I think we're definitely gonna need to get a drink for you. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the rec room, our uh, second floor here at the Downtown Sporting Club. And we got some delicious frozen whiskey and ginger drinks here oh, for you. Oh, you said two of my favorite words, whiskey and ginger. And it's really, I think, one of the best frozen drinks I've ever had. Mm. Oh, my friends are here, yay! Music industry insiders Anastasia Brown and Dawn Solar are two of my dear friends. Who better to hurl heavy metal weapons with than them? So I just have a question before we start. Yes. Is it better to drink while you extra or after you're done extra? I think the answer is both. Okay. I think it's important Good. to do Cheers. both. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. 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 <laughs> and it's just straight back, straight forward. So it's a I'm pretty not simple lie motion. You, I'm okay. nervous. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Just across Broadway is Robert's Western World. This building has been a warehouse, an office, a guitar factory, and a liquor store before it became Robert's Rhinestone Western Wear, a clothing store. Music, food, and a bar was added in the 1990s, and it's a classic. Wow. This is one of my favorite places in Nashville, and it has been since 1990. The level of quality is so high. Right. So they don't like just let anyone play or sing. Good friends, good music, good times. And to wash everything down with a kick, look no further than Tennessee whiskey. There are versions produced all over the state, but for a lesson in what makes it different, I'm taking a drive about an hour or so to the little town of Lynchburg, home to the whiskey giant Jack Daniels. And there's a little bit of irony here, as it resides in a dry county, which means you can drink it, but you can't buy it. And this is Jack right here. Yeah, that's Jack himself. He was only 5'2", and he wore a size 4 boot. So he was a pretty small person, but he was a real person. He's not some marketing figment no. of the imagination. Right. Uh, he really lived here in Lynchburg and made whiskey here in Lynchburg. His dad had remarried after his mother passed away, and he was the baby of 13 children. So when his dad died, he was taken in by the Call family. And on the Call farm was a man named Nathan Green who had the reputation of being the best whiskey maker in this whole area. And at the time, he was an enslaved man. But young Jack Daniel learned the art of making whiskey with Nathan Green. Uh, fast forward a few years, the whiskey business was growing and growing, and Jack ended up buying the still from Mr. Call, and then he hired Nathan Green to be his first whiskey maker. So he started on his own with his whiskey making back in 1866. Um, but he quickly realized he was going to need more water to make good whiskey, and that's why he moved here for this cave spring in the 1880s. Yeah, 56 degrees stays constant year-round. Only this water is going into our distillery for mashing and things like that, the creation of our whiskey. Every bottle of Jack Everyone. Daniels starts right there. It sure does. It all starts right there. This is the old office. This is the only original building we have that dates back to when Jack was here. We really think this is a special picture because it's a fully inclusive picture that honestly at early 1900s it would have been unusual for that to happen. Because these were descendants of Nathan Green, right? His sons. His yes. sons. And so they were making whiskey with this team. That's right. And we have three descendants still today making our whiskey with this uh, the Green family. So it's Fantastic. really cool. Let's talk a little bit about these grains here. So the traditional Tennessee whiskey or our bourbon type recipe is 80% corn, 12% malted barley, and 8% rye. So that grain soon becomes beer. This is where we're grinding the grain to expose the starches. 
Then we'll cook the starches in our cave water and then break down the starches with the malted barley to the fermentable sugars, which is of course what we're gonna need for the fermentation process. This one's just filled, brand new. So at this point, we call it beer. Right. It'll sit right here for about six days and we'll let our yeast do its thing. And, and the bubbles that you see coming off the top, that's carbon dioxide. And yeast just, you know, literally when there's sugar in anything, the yeah. yeast will be like that old Pac-Man game and kind of <laughs> eat right. the sugar. And then the byproduct is, of course, alcohol and CO2. That beer now gets distilled into whiskey. Through still number one is the fermented mash in this pipe here. That's going up to the top of the still, and it trickles down through a bunch of trays or plates, which of course cooks the alcohol out the top. And then it'll actually go into a second still that we call a doubler. That vapor off of the doubler will be cooled back into what we see here, liquid whiskey. So that's brand this new. Is brand new whiskey. 140 proof, and if we put it into our barrel, we would be required to call it bourbon. Right. Of course, we don't do that here. We have a little extra step. This is what sets Tennessee whiskey apart. This step right here yes. of charcoal mellowing. That's right. We have 72 of these charcoal mellowing tanks filled with our charcoal that we're making ourselves from maple trees. And charcoal is odorless and tasteless. It's actually removing things, not adding things. And so that's what it does for our whiskey. Um, you can see the drips. That's the whiskey flowing down. The charcoal is 10 feet deep, and this process takes about three days. So this is the smallest barrel house that we have on site. The color in whiskey comes from? The barrel itself. The only thing that adds to our whiskey are the grains, the yeast, and the barrel. Every single day we make brand new barrels for Jack Daniels. 100% new oak, we never reuse them. No, legally, to be Tennessee whiskey, you can't reuse a barrel either. Whiskey goes in clear, comes out nice, rich, and dark. We'll pull it out and then bottle it. And now we get to see what's in the glass. Yeah, absolutely, that's what it's all about, right? So we have in the first two cups in front, the before and the after whiskey. So Before charcoal mellowing. Right. So, and then after. So this is that, that brand new baby Jack Annuals. Now this is not 140 proof, this is only 80 proof. We've added some water to make it a little easier for us to taste. You get that kind of yeasty, sweet kind of corn there flavor. Is a, there is almost a sweet impression yes. to that. Yes, yep. Uh, so now we move to the after glass. And as you can see, still clear as water. Go ahead and taste and see what you think. That's a big difference. It is a big difference. The viscosity, you know, yes. it, it feels like it's uh, softer, smoother, mm -hmm. yep. a little bit lighter, even though the alcohol is clearly the same. Clearly the same. All right, well, with that, I say. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Sipping whiskey is always wonderful, but back in Nashville, a good cocktail can sometimes be even better. And sneaking around the storage room of the elegantly regal Noel Hotel, you'll be surprised with what you find inside. The Hidden Bar. This is the Hidden Bar. This is. And so I yeah. think there's a little hidden secret that people don't know about. Yeah, there is a hidden gem, bourbon, Tennessee bourbon. Because bourbon does not have to be from Kentucky. Nope. I always tell people nope. this, right? Bourbon can be anywhere. When you're talking about cocktails and bourbon, give me a couple of your favorites. Right off the bat, my favorite's gonna be a Boulevardier. I love you. You got a Negroni, which is a classic cocktail, and a Boulevardier, which is a classic cocktail. And the only difference between both of them is that one is replaced with a bourbon or a rye as opposed to a gin. So if you're a brown juice drinker and you want that whiskey or that rye flavor, you're gonna go with a Boulevardier, and it's excellent. Boulevardier? Boulevardier. It is with rye traditionally, but I think it goes really well with Bib and Tucker, which is a bourbon. So it's one part Campari, one part whiskey or rye, and one part sweet vermouth. Stirred, served in a traditional Manhattan glass. It's a classic cocktail that has been forgotten, in my opinion. Uh, it's such a pretty cocktail, it too, is. isn't it's it? It is. It's so pretty. So you get those essential oils coming from the citrus, right? The citrus it's, is a very uh, important part. It's of a so bourbon. important. There's a bitter note to this. Campari from the brings Campari, the bitterness. right? Yeah, nice absolutely. bitterness, but balanced with this sort of, you know, spirit forwardness of the absolutely. bourbon. Yeah, but a little sweetness from right. the bourbon. That's why it's my favorite cocktail, is because I'm a I'm right. a spirit forward guy. Yeah. What else can we do with bourbon? One of the most popular traditional drinks is the Manhattan. One part sweet vermouth, two parts whiskey or bourbon. The maraschino is one of the most important parts. Yes. Manhattan, a little bit darker, a uh, lot sweeter. 
This is a, this is a good one. Them. Yeah. So I have Tennessee bourbon showcased in two different ways. Correct. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. And now back to the music. Featured in the TV show Nashville, eight miles from downtown in a suburban strip mall that's easy to miss, there's nowhere more renowned for discovering new talent than the Bluebird Cafe. The Bluebird Cafe started in 1982 as an ordinary restaurant. Wasn't me, wasn't you, wasn't anything we could do. There was an opportunity for a songwriter's night, and it presented itself as a really fitting kind of performance for the size of this room, which is 90 seats. And our founder, Amy, started really directing the talent focus towards that acoustic music. If we're talking from the Bluebird Cafe focuses on original music. Our early shows typically don't have a cover charge, and that's because they're the up-and-coming writers who are just getting their feet on the ground. The later shows have a cover charge. All that door money goes to the songwriters. We make our money here at the Bluebird on food and beverage sales, and of course, merchandise sales. Uh, that's what keeps our doors open, so that the songwriters can make the money that they need. After being inspired by this music, I went to hang out with my buddy, the inspirational TV host, vintner, and singer, Kathy Lee Gifford, who now lives in the Nashville area. We had a chat, a nosh, and a sip of her wine. I've always loved Nashville, but I've never lived here before. And I haven't moved permanently, but I'm, I'm spending about 90% of my time here now. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh la la. Oh, chicken Thank and waffles. You, and biscuits. Okay, oh this is. Oh my gosh. And the Southern is known for this. Wow, you're cute. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. He cute is cute, guys huh? that give you grits. How good is this? <laughs> so, what are you up to? Oh gosh, what aren't I up to? Um, up to my eyeballs and, and stuff that I'm loving. The first oratorio that I wrote with Nicole C. Mullen, and we, I filmed her and made my directorial debut in Israel. She was magnificent. And um, every one of the stories in the Bible if you know them and you tell them, that is like ripped from the headlines today, Leslie. So um, so you're bringing those to life? I'm bringing those to life. And did that help you and make the decision? Chicken. Dig in here, it smells yeah. so good. Make the decision to move to Nashville because you're a music person, you're a singer, you you know, this is... Music's been my life since I was a child. My first job was, uh, was as a musician, as a singer. In 1978, I came here to Nashville for the first time and shot my first sitcom. Really? Mm -hmm. It's called Hee Haw Honeys. It was all about music. And I, I lived here pretty much for a year. I met people here who are still my dear friends. I met Dolly Parton doing that show. I met the Gatlin brothers. I was coming here for the last two years. The first dinner party that I had, I, I was in a little, little place at that time. I've since moved on. Mom has moved up. <laughs> but um, I had 11 people at my table, and every single person there was, was in the music industry. And we got up, and somebody took my guitar off the off the wall, tuned it up, and somebody sat down at the piano. Here, it's part it's, of it's life. It's like breathing here. Everybody breathes music. They live it. Give us a little song. Can you give us a little tune? How do I begin to begin again? Breathe deep and let all the fresh, clean air in. How do I find the courage to say, I'm going to start a brand new life today? Well, and to that, I'm going to raise a glass before you put that in, because okay. this is your beautiful gift wine. Thank you, sweetie. You had it and really I am, me, my Pinot I am Grigio. A, that's Pinot Grigio, and this is rosé. And I'll tell you, it is one of my favorite rosés. I love you. I love you. Thanks for, thanks thank for, you having, for me having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the chicken and grapes. Now we're headed over to a party hosted by Anastasia, Dawn, and David. What more can you ask for than having good friends together with flowing wine, amazing southern fare, shrimp, biscuits with fried green tomatoes, and of course, hot chicken. And you guessed it, music. Yeah, I was doing push-ups and then I heard the bushes rustle. <laughs> <laughs> last trip past the strip mall, 518 with the tank on it. Of them. Now, 
Nashville, what to say about this place. I'll tell you, it's my third visit here, and I could live here. There is this sense of community, and not just around the table. I mean, yeah, you can eat things that set your mouth on fire and then quench them with some wonderful things to drink. But it's about the music. It's about the people. Did I mention it's about the music and the music? Come to Nashville and get a taste of delicious. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With Ama Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. For more information on all episodes, along with our expanded digital series, including behind the scenes footage and stories, and links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, go to 100 Days Drinks Dishes Destinations.com. Mm. 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 <laughs> I think after actually some heat, this is going to cool me down. Oh, yeah. I have a cold headache. Hang yeah. on. <laughs> you drink too quick, didn't you? I drink too quickly. So the whole part about Nashville is this sense of community, and so much of it happens around music. And people's... Too loud? And music draws everybody together. And Hold it down, please. <laughs> <laughs> no pot clanging. <laughs> I got my breasts in my hands. I'm ready to go.